I've been pumping out my brake fluid on a cool September day. Gotta get the Duramax fixed, cause she's a beast if I do say. Can you hear the turbos pulling as that Cummins or Power Stroke approaches behind? With a cloud of smoke, I hit the gas pedal and leave them all behind. All right, guys, today I have to do a little work on the Duramax. I've been losing my power steering, and so I've come to find out that it's the hydro booster and master cylinder is leaking all around there. Anyway, I'll show you what's going on here with it. So besides the obvious fact that I noticed my power steering going out because the steering was getting hard, looking in under the fender here, you guys can see how there is just a mass of, you know, just wet spots. You know, at first I thought, okay, did I have a brake line go out? Am I losing some other kind of fluid? But then when I popped the hood, I noticed here on my hydro booster and stuff, you can see where it is all wet. Everything's kind of coated down. And the one day, as soon as I got home from work, I popped the, uh, the hood and looked under here, and I could actually see drips of fluid coming down here. So obviously the seals in my hydro booster are bad. I don't know if the seal in my master cylinder is bad. I bought a master cylinder just in case it is. If not, I'll return the master cylinder, but the hydro booster is definitely leaking and need to be replaced. Now you may be asking yourself, why in the world mess with putting money back into a truck that has almost 300,000 miles? She's really starting to rust out here in the rocker panel, a little bit in the cab corner, tailgate's rusted shot, rear bumper's rusted shot, passenger side rocker is starting to rust through and get holes. Well, there's several reasons. One, She's paid for, so I don't have a nice big payment I have to do every month. Two, it's a legendary LBZ Duramax, so you don't have all the emission stuff you have in all these newer diesels that once you get 20 or 30,000 miles on, you gotta start replacing stuff. And number three, Is it worth putting money in to fix the old girl up? I think so. Anyway, I'm gonna get her into the carport here and hopefully things will go smoothly, won't be rusted too fast, and this will be a quick, easy swap job, but brush your fingers, cause you never know. All right, we got the truck in the carport here. First thing we're gonna do is a little trick for taking the pressure off of the system is we're just gonna go ahead while the uh, truck is turned off I'm just going to take and uh, push down the brake pedal a couple times. That'll help take the pressure off of the system for when we take the lines off. Alright, now I'm hoping I can just take the master cylinder loose and have enough play to kind of get it forward out of the way for when I take the hydro booster off. But the problem is, is this is hard line here, so I don't know if I'll have enough slack in that to get it out of the way. If I have to unhook it, then I'm going to lose all my brake fluid, probably right onto the concrete floor. But, as you guys know by now, I tend to make messes. And hopefully these bolts will come loose without too much difficulty. This truck is 11 years old, however. So... I don't know if she's gonna go well or not. We'll find out. All right, there's that. So this guy should be loose. Just work its way out. I bet you I'm gonna have to take that guy clear off of there. And clear out of there. Which is more than I was looking to do, but it is what it is, I guess. So, We'll have to unhook a little sensor here. Let you know when your brake fluid is about empty. 
All right, I'm gonna use my brain here a little bit before I unhook any lines. I'm gonna pump all my old brake fluid out of here, get as much out as I can so I'm not slopping it all over the place. Now I won't be able to reuse this again because I'm pumping it into an old uh, gear oil bottle which probably still has a little bit in it. But this will at least save me from spilling as much brake fluid on the floor as it potentially has the potential to do. Potentially has the potential. All right, got that mostly empty. Now let's go ahead and pull these hard lines free so I can get my master cylinder out of here and out of the way. That actually came free rather easily. Much to my surprise and delight. All right, there be master cylinder. Now for a hydro booster. I'll have to take off. We've got one, two, two hard lines and one soft line. Shouldn't be too bad. All right, now in order to take this off, we've got to go inside the cab and unbolt some stuff from the brake pedal and unbolt this whole guy from the inside. Oh, so now's the fun stuff of working in under here. If you guys can see, there's four bolts here. There's one, there's one, there's two over here. That's what actually bolts the hydro booster to the firewall. But I gotta unhook the rod here that actually runs through the firewall and connects the hydro booster to the brake, which involves taking out this 10 millimeter bolt here and pulling this pin out. I don't know if these wires here will be in the way or not. I'll find out when we get there. But uh, I'll check back in with you once I get all this undone. All right. Getting to these bolts is an absolute pain in the keister, but we're still making progress. Whew, all right, finally got it. So now this guy should just lose my camera. You guys okay? Like I was saying, this guy should just wiggle out of there now. Like that. There's more fluid all over the ground. There she is. Now I do gotta transfer the plunger and the guts for it out of the old hydro booster into the new one because it doesn't come with all that. And there's a little spring in there that I'm gonna use both hands and put the camera down so I don't lose it. So here's the stuff I had to take out of the old hydro booster. It's just the spring, this plunger, and this funny looking retainer clip that will actually set into a groove and hold everything in place. I just got to put this in the new one and then this guy is ready to bolt back on. And here you guys can see how this guy on top here, this little retaining clip, these little arms here just kind of snap into a groove and that'll hold all your, that'll hold your spring and your plunger arm in place till you get everything bolted back together. Which is nice. Alright, with that done comes the fun part of throwing this guy back in here and then having to bleed and then having to get them bolts back in. Oh, and bolted back up. Why isn't that going in? Yep, just just this one corner hole, that's it. Oh, I knew it was going to crash the crap. Come on now. Steady him, firm grip. we go. Okay, so I got the Hydro Boost all bolted on secure. It's ready to go. We're going to pop these protective caps out of here, maybe. Come on. Oh, they got those in there pretty tight. I need a pair of pliers or something. 
There she comes. Pop these guys out of here. Go ahead and hook our lines up. Now the new master cylinder did come with new O-rings for on the end of our hard lines here. So we'll replace those while we're at it. And let's hope I don't drop them and lose them in the engine bay somewhere. I got my master cylinder here all ready to go. What I didn't show you, I did this off camera just because of time and convenience is I went ahead and put some uh, brake fluid in a reservoir, capped off the ends, and then just manually pumped the cylinder in here to uh, prime this, get all the air bled out of it. So then when it comes time to bleed all the brake lines, we won't have near as much air to have to push through the entire system. So it should make bleeding the brakes go a whole lot faster. Get this guy boarded up and we'll be about done. Ooh, look at all those nice shiny new parts in there. It's like a whole new truck. Well, overall that wasn't too difficult of a job. I guess uh, the hardest part was getting under the dash to remove the bolts for the hydro boost, which time consuming, kind of crampy because I had to spin all up different, contort different angles to get in there, but not too bad, so now the Duramax is, uh, should be good to go for a while now. I guess the next goal with this guy is to get the rocker panels replaced and rear bumper replaced, and then I'm probably just going to have the whole thing repainted. Either that or I'll find a, uh, good used three-quarter ton that, uh, will replace this, but I very much doubt that's going to happen. I'm pretty much in love with this truck. I mean, can you blame me? Have you heard the turbo whistle on this guy? Yeah, I'm not ready to get rid of it anytime soon. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little project for the day. And until next time, whether it's a ATV side-by-side -side or a big honking diesel truck or gas keep on riding so you remember just several minutes ago when this video started i said that this guy is worth fixing up well i kind of put all them parts on there finally got some brake fluid today topped her off went to uh bleed the brakes prime the system and uh, well i'll just show you lo and behold a couple more of my brake lines rusted through and I am losing brake fluid all over the place. Oh, if it's not one thing, it's another. Say, uh, none of you guys would want to buy a LBZ Duramax with uh, lots of performance goodies, would you?